very accurate. A lot of power guys hey guys welcome back to the channel beretta 9 millimeter usa here and today's video is going to be on this new kimber repeat black ice 1911 in 10 millimeter a fantastic offering from kimber one that we have enjoyed in 45 acp and this time we're going to take it out in 10 millimeter and that video is coming up next first shots with the 10 millimeter kimber repeat black ice Kimber stock mag up first and then two Wilsons. Shooting V Crown ammunition right here. So some uh, full power 10 millimeter self defense jacketed hollow points. There we go. Very nice. All right, guys, so this is basically a top end production 1911 from Kimber. It has an extremely good slide to frame fitament. Let me just look at that thing. This gun is super tight. Extremely little movement in it overall. It's fit like a Dan Watson 1911. Extremely well fit. Very nice. Let's look at the beaver tail and how that's fit to the frame. Just a little bit of movement side to side. Very well fit overall. Got it again from the top. So again, just very little movement there. Let's see how sensitized the beaver tail is here. Press on the trigger all the way. There you go. So this is how much movement you have to the uh, utmost. Pressing up the beaver tail. Let's see how far it has to go out to be able to be pressed. Not a whole lot. Beaver tail is very well sensitized, and the trigger here is really good. Two more things to cover real fast here before we go to another string of fire here. The barrel movement, just a little bit of movement again, about as much as a Dan Weston 1911, Smith and Weston 1911, etc. And speaking of the barrel here, real quick, guys, before we jump on to something else. It does have a fully supported chamber in there with a um, feed ramp. You can see right there the feed ramp and the barrel is fully supported on the sides. So that's Kimber just trying to build it as strong as they can make it to make sure this 10 millimeter lasts for you. Continuing to talk about the barrel here on this pistol, it is a five inch stainless steel match grade 10 millimeter barrel here that is coated in a DLC finish. That's diamond like carbon finish. Very, very high quality finish. Um, super resilient to rust um, and just you know a very good slick finish won't require a whole lot of lubrication or anything like that the pistol has a traditional gi guide rod assembly in it so we like that it's traditional no full length guide rod here it's nice to see the muzzle end of the pistol looks very striking overall past that let's talk about this real fast the pistol does have front cocking serrations as you can see and they are fairly easy to use here even with that 20 pound flat wire recoil spring, you can get a hold of it here. Depress checks fairly easy with this pistol or, you know, racking it completely here. Don't exactly, you know, recommend racking it from the front, but Brett Senior does it sometimes and I mean, I get it, but normally that's for press checks, of course. And you do have a chamber indicator right there, as you can see, so you can see your brass, if need be, or your nickel casing. All right, Kimber Repeat 10 millimeter. Twenty-two yards away. The sights are terrific, guys. This thing is on the money. You do see that you have a skeletonized hammer back here. Looks very nice. And this is a traditional C 
Series 70 pistol, so it is not a modified Series 80 pistol like most Kimber Custom 2 pistols. So that's really nice to see traditional John Browning design right here. And that, um, you know, when you press the beaver tail end, it's not activating another safety here on the traditional Kimbers. Definitely can tell you're shooting something more than a 45, though. Just to be completely honest, you're dealing with some recoil here. Let's see what this looks like. Single-handed fire. Okay, did not lock back. What mag? And it's still not locking back. What mag? That's the a Wilson, Wilson okay. Combat Magazine. A little bit different. Let's try that again. And then That's it weird. did. Okay. Rarely we have seen that, but we have seen it before. This is a stock magazine, looks like. All right, guys, the slide on this Kimber is from solid stainless steel, as is the frame on the gun. It's all beautiful and solid stainless steel right there. The mainspring housing, as you can see right here, that's metal. No doubt about it being steel. It is not plastic. We've had some differences of opinions with other viewers, but Kimber does make some that have a full metal mainspring housing to it, just so everyone's in the know. If you step up to the repeat model or the black ice repeat that you see here, you're going to get solid steel construction throughout the whole gun. And that mainspring housing is connected to a two-piece magwell. So it's a mainspring housing magwell right there. Which is actually pretty well done, i got to say. Very happy with it. The way it looks, the way it functions. Pretty nicely done overall. What do you think of the texture on the back strap as far as the mainspring and the uh, front strap and the, the G10 grips there? I think this is pretty good, guys. It looks like it's aggressive and it's actually not that bad. It's very well done, I think. Not overly aggressive and not too easy that you're not going to be able to actually get some traction and some use out of it. Um, the back is kind of the, the design element and so it's got some definite cutouts in it and stuff so i think that's where they get the idea to carry it over yeah the top of the slide has the uh, same design the very top near the front side yeah so i guess my answer is um it does a decent job it really does yeah i'm pretty happy with the way it looks with the way it operates the way it looks is not your traditional 1911 so if you guys want something a little bit different i think this fills that niche that's what i thought when i first saw the handgun i mean everything from the sights right to the way some of the rest of it looks it's very unique this is kimber not just sitting back and producing that everybody else has been producing they're actually reaching out and they're going into an area that really maybe hasn't been touched before some design elements and whatnot that they wanted to put into in a new handgun and i kind of respect that i think that's cool and i think this pistol is cool it's even better in real life than it is to see in photos by far, I think that this is uh, Kimber's best 1911 pistol they probably ever put out. The repeat pistols. Super high quality parts, you know, less plastic, really well fit. You know, I, I would say it's above their, you know, standard custom shop stuff. Definitely. And it does feature Kimber's Kim Pro 2 silver gray finish. So that, again, is something a little bit better looking than your regular stainless steel finish, right? Yeah, and then it's got a DLC finished barrel. And that's well done also. The overall pistol comes in at a weight of 38 ounces, guys, so it is traditional weight right here. It should help control the 45 ACP really well and the 10 millimeter also pretty well. Wow, this thing is on the money. Very accurate.
lot of power, guys. Very accurate. Stock magazine locked back fine. The pistol has been running 100%. Yeah. No issues at all on the first 100 rounds. I think that's uh, worth noting. I will tell you guys, you can definitely tell you're shooting something more than a 45 ACP here. Yep. So if you're not recoil sensitive, the 10 millimeter is going to be a great gun for you. If you are recoil sensitive, buy it in 45 ACP. Yeah. Brittany Singer and I were talking about his Colt Delta Elite, you know, from 1987, uh, a couple days ago. And by far, you guys, this Kimber and also uh, Brittany Singer's Les Spare Kenai Special 10 millimeter are just, you know, night and day differences. They're they are so Miles much ahead. better. Miles ahead. It's yeah. unreal. I mean, you know, again, talking about plastic parts, Brittany Singer didn't realize, and obviously I didn't realize because I never got to handle that pistol. It had a plastic mainspring housing, and what else was plastic? The guide rod. Yeah, the GI guide rod was plastic also as well. So, you know, just better quality parts being used on this modern day pistol compared to that pistol back then. And speaking of Colt, you know, Colt is using a lot of plastic parts to this day on their 1911s. And that began way back then. Yeah, not that I want to take this to a Colt um, coverage, but they have been bought, they have been purchased. I do expect their quality control to go up once Dan Wesson and CZ start doing their thing. Yeah. But for right now, when you're comparing apples to apples and stuff like that, there's no question that the Kimbers come in at a higher quality point, in my opinion, than those other guns. It doesn't mean they're bad guns. It just means that, you know, each one has its own individual uh, characteristics, and I am pretty happy with the way this one comes out. Wilson Combat 10 millimeter mag. Shooting at 22 yards now. Nice. Hitting all center mass there at 22 yards. Another Wilson mag. Let's try single handed. This pistol shoots extremely well. Here we go. 15 yard target single hand. 10 millimeter. Let's talk about trigger real quick. It is an aluminum trigger. It is very unique looking. I don't think there's much else out there that looks like this. As far as the trigger pull itself. Just that much uptake or take up right there before you hit when it starts uh, firming up right there. I'm putting some more pressure on it. Little, a little, little movement right there, yeah. And then it snaps. So. Reset out just a little bit and, and then it resets. I'm back on it. It doesn't act like it's going to move. Let's see if it moves a little bit before it breaks. Not much. Not much. It's a very good combat trigger, no doubt. Yeah. And it feels really good when you're shooting it at the range, guys. It feels really good. I'd say it's right around the four and a half to five pound mark you know right about that which is what they wanted it at they wanted it at four and a half pounds i think it's very positive the break and the reset are very good the first green target on your right hand side is at 21 yards away so let's see if i can just put a couple rounds on that okay i didn't see it all the first way first time it's fine now 21 yards away one pulled to the left. Perfect hit. Okay. That is a, yeah. Got a fair defeat right here. It is, high practice. it is wedged in there. Yeah. It is wedged in there and it fell out on the last round. That's with the stock mag. One-handed, 21 yards away. OK. 
Okay, so one malfunction. It cleared pretty easy. Yeah. Let's All go right, back hold on. And I gotta forth. get uh, my double ears. <laughs> the pistol does come with an extended magazine release button right there, which looks pretty good, guys. And it's knurled or checkered there. So, yeah, I was pretty happy with that, too. Very nice. Yeah, works really well. No problems at all with that. The trigger undercut, nice and high. It really lets your fingers get all the way up there. So, very nice cut behind the trigger wall. Nicely done, Kimber. Let's talk about the safety real fast here on this 1911. It does have an ambidextrous safety here. Nice size paddles on both sides. Cocking the pistol back here. Let's activate the safety. Nice, tight, and positive. There's no question whether or not you're activating that safety on this 1911. Very nice. High quality. This pistol does have an 18 and a half pound recoil spring stock. Uh, for a 10 millimeter, that's a little bit light. Um, normally you would find that in like a 45 ACP handgun, traditionally anyway. Brett Singer and I did put in a 20 pound flat wire recoil spring from Wilson Combat in this pistol as seen here. So this is actually the stock spring and stock GI guide rod. As you can see, it is not hollowed out. It is a solid piece of steel right there. So that is very nice to see. They're not cutting corners and putting a hollowed out uh, guide rod in this pistol or plastic. Very nice, good quality part right there. Also love the ambi safety on it. Feels excellent. Very well fit, no movement. Absolutely love shooting at you guys. Okay guys, my last shooting here with the Kimber 10 millimeter repeat. This may call for a versus video against my $4,000 less bare 10 millimeter. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a $1,500 Kimber going up against a $4,000 less bare in 10 millimeter. And if we can find enough ammo <laughs> to put that video on for you, maybe we'll do that. All right, my last shooting right here Last magazine, I'm gonna just go from target to target at the 15 yard targets in front of me with a 10 millimeter repeat. That's about as quick as I can do it with the 10 millimeter and dealing with the recoil at the same time. All right, the Kimber was near perfect, had one malfunction. Other than that, the pistol ran fantastic. The recoil is a little bit more than your 45 ACP, which I think you're gonna expect anyway. So I can see why they're selling these things as fast as they can make them. Kimber, I believe, has another winner on their hands, be it in this finish or in the black finish. Your choice, guys. No problems at all as far as accuracy is concerned. And overall, I think the gun did really well. What'd you think, young brother? I thought it was fantastic. I didn't have that malfunction, obviously. You actually experienced one of your first malfunctions with a 10 millimeter pistol. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's nice to see. It wasn't my problem this time. <laughs> right. And it was a little strange, a little yeah. odd. So. And it was with the Kimber Factory Mag, which, you know, again, with all 1911s, it's kind of a problem. 1911 magazines in general, and kind of the two main go-tos for a lot of people are Trip Research Cobra Mags and Wilson Combat 1911 magazines. But, um, you know, I don't know if Kimber makes a Kim Pro Tac Mag for the 10 millimeter. They might or they may not. You know, just use good quality mags, bottom line, in your 1911s, people. Absolutely. So this Kimber does come with the high visibility True Glow TFX sights on it. It does come capable of being racked off objects right here. This is made of steel. So you've got a great ledge right there to rack things off of, be it a table or your boot or anything else off your uniform, off your belt. Make sure you practice that kind of stuff. It is capable of doing so. The back sight does have a partial serrated rear sight to it. And it does come with a U-notch in the rear, which helps you focus on that front sight right there. Very nice sights. And those are tritium fiber optics, right? Yep. Again, not your traditional sights that you'd see on a 1911, but this particular 1911 pushes that envelope. And it does it again with the sights that are on top of the pistol. 
This 1911 from Kimber does come with only one eight round magazine, so you will need to pick up four or five extra 10 millimeter magazines to go with it. This Kimber right here in 10 millimeter comes with an MSRP of $1,645. You can also get this black ice finish in nine millimeter and 45 ACP, or you can go with the all black version with the gold barrel in 45 and 10 millimeter, I believe. That's right. So you do have some options and choices out there. I do own the all black in 45 ACP and I absolutely love it. Even though it has a gold barrel, which I didn't know if that would be my thing or not, it doesn't bother me at all. I love the pistol itself. And in 45 ACP, I think it's so easy to shoot. So if you're a 45 ACP person, get it in 45 ACP. If you're some of those 10 millimeter guys, do not shy away from this Rapide black ice in 10 millimeter. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review video. If you're interested in this 1911 from Kimber or anything else Kimber may offer, make sure you go over to their website and check out their products there. As always, guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and become a Patreon member if you want to see our videos early. All of our new stuff goes over to Patreon for about 30 days or 60 days and then slowly starts making its way over to YouTube. We also have a lot of communication going back and forth with the folks over there on Patreon. If you're interested in that, that's where we're at. Thanks a lot for watching the video, guys. Remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting.